Hello and welcome back to the Wrexham Way. Hope you're all doing well and looking forward to today's episode as we take on Chelsea in the Premier League. Before we have the small matter of the EFL Cup, the League Cup final against Aston Villa. Our first major cup final and winning it will guarantee us a spot in European football next season, which would be a major milestone for us. So if you think we can do it, make sure you do drop a like on today's video for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Before we get into today's first game against Chelsea though, we need to talk about some transfers and transfers have happened and I have broken the transfer record actually. Um, I spent £32 million on a player and I'm not sure you're going to like it. We'll start off with a sale. Uh, Luciao has left the club. Our young winger who was not really developing and wasn't really going to play considering that we have sort of dropped the winger system this season. He's gone to Leeds United for £14 million. So £9 million worth of profit on him is, is not bad going. You also saw last episode uh, Frank Nice. He joined the club. Well, we offered him a contract uh, last episode. He's now subsequently come to join the club as a winger on either side should we want to play as wingers. But I see him as a false nine, I think, going into the future. I like playing with a false nine. I like playing with two strikers. And I think that would be quite a good option for us. Also branded as a wonder kid as well with five stars of potential. Like this guy is good. But it's the next transfer that I've made for £32 million that I think is going to really split the comment section massively. Uh, as you can see here, he's back. Randy Ramheimer is back after a short spell at Arsenal uh, and a brief loan spell at Norwich where actually he played very well in the championship uh, I brought him back 32 million it's what it took uh, 16 up front 16 down the line and uh, look he's a good player he is crucially one of our own that we never wanted to see leave the club in the first place but also has newly become branded as a wonder kid and I just felt like I had to get him back I had to get him back so here he is, hopefully going to be here for the rest of his career and hopefully going to be a great wonder kid forward. And again, can play on the left wing, but I also see him as a false nine. He'd be a really decent false nine with a bit better passing and vision. I mean, can be a decent advance forward as well, to be fair. Uh, finishing composure, increase that a little bit. Pace is pretty decent too. Can play with both feet crucially as well. I see him as a really top quality striker. So for me, we now have four really good strikers at the team. We do need to try and get rid of Sione because, well, he's just never really done anything. And there's one great season with us. And then since then has just dropped off massively and not really done an awful lot. So we need to try and sell him. But clubs aren't really bidding big money for him. So that's a bit of an issue. He's essentially now our fifth choice striker this season. I think what happens though, now that we've got Pereira, Pepe, uh, we've got Nice and Randy Ramheimer, it probably means that Pepe becomes the backup to Pineda in the advance, or not Pineda, sorry, uh, Pepe becomes the backup to Pereira in the advance forward position. And then Nice and Ramheimer sort of rotate in that false nine position. But I am still pretty keen on playing Pepe and Pereira this season together on the grounds that Pepe's got 15 goals to his name this season so far and Pereira's got 11 goals and 8 assists to his name so far this season. He's just come back actually uh, from a month-long injury or so. If you look at um, history injuries you can see he's been out for four weeks or so with an abdominal strain so we've missed him for the past few weeks or so it has allowed actually Nice and Randy Ramhammer to play Ramhammer got injured half an hour into his first game he's actually been out since then so he's not played much uh, but Frank Nice has got two assists to his uh, to his name right now which is not too bad going I would say but what hasn't been great now you were last here for the wins against West Ham in the semi-finals and the win against Mason United in the FA Cup third round since then Three losses, two draws, two wins. It's not been brilliant. Now, we started off with a 5-0 loss to Arsenal, but that was on the ground that we had to rotate after the West Ham game literally two days before it. Um, so, rotated, played wingers. It all kind of went a bit wrong in that game. A bit of a write-off, really. We did get two good wins under our belt against Leicester and West Brom. As you can see, Pepe scoring three goals in those games and got a fourth in a 1-1 draw against Everton, which I don't know how we didn't win. 26 shots to nine shots, a 3.52 XG and yet we still couldn't score more than one goal to only get a draw in that game. That was frustrating, but two losses on the bounce, West Ham being one of them, a rival for a top seven place, that was frustrating, and then Leicester in the FA Cup fourth round, 
Kamara sent off in the 76th minute. Didn't really affect things. We just didn't play very well. And then last time out, a 0-0 draw with Newcastle. Not ideal. So the past three games, we haven't played particularly well. And that makes me nervy with a cup final coming up. And again, it's Chelsea in second place in the table. Despite the results, we are still in with a shout of a top seven finish this season. We're only one point behind Liverpool and West Ham, albeit with a game in hand they have on us. We've played 27, they've played 26. So it's it's pretty tight right now. Um, I'm sure they'll go on to win their games as well at some point whenever they play. So nervous about that. But the big game against Chelsea today, I'm not quite so confident. We beat them a couple of episodes ago, didn't we? Today, I'm not so sure. Away from home, this is the team that I think should be getting the business done for us. So Mantle starts in goal with Suntesic, Felipe, Saliba and Neto in the back. Uh, Lavia, Patrick, Paniotov and Sousa through the middle. And then of course that strike force I was telling you about earlier on, Pereira and Pepe leading the line. So we'll focus on this league game to start things off and then we'll start to prep for the cup final, which I'm very nervous for because we're not in great form. We've won one game in our last five and that's not good form. And depending what happens here today, it could be no wins in our last five after this result. So heading into the cup final, we're not in great form. We'll have to assess what Villa are doing after this game as well. Not played them for a little while. In the meantime, though, 15 seconds into this game, Paniotov finds Pereira, who scores a goal. And that is exactly the sort of start we needed in today's game against Chelsea. Perfect start for us. Literally 25 seconds into the game, a goal there. A Pepe breaking down at the left-hand side of the pitch really nicely, plays it inside to Paniotov, who just happens to find Pereira just in front of him, comfortably through, slots it under the keeper, goal. Okay, so that's a pretty decent start to today's game. I don't know why the league table is not showing up anymore. Um, league table, please, that's much nicer. League table, I've clicked on, there we go, league table, we can see it, and that result puts us back into a top seven as things stand right now. Also, it would probably make more sense, actually, to swap latest scores and wreck some stats over, wouldn't it? So let's put the latest, in fact, let's put the table in the middle. Let's put the latest scores on this side and we'll put the Wrexham stats here, shall we? So we can sort of see what we're doing with our players. Excellent work. You can see as well, Chelsea playing quite a wide uh, back line, to be fair which is quite nice for us because we play pretty narrowly. So hopefully we can try and take advantage of that uh, through the middle of their defence. As the ball is played up towards Pepe, who can't win it in the air, but Vasco does win the second ball there as he brings it down the right-hand side of the pitch, plays it into Pereira. Pereira can just cross it, doesn't need to. It's an own goal for Amy in the end there, I think, as oh, it is an own goal. I thought Pereira might just get away with maybe having that as his, but he was trying to put it across the six-yard area towards Pepe. Instead, it's turned into the back of the Chelsea net and today we are finally starting to actually score some goals we've struggled to do it in the past few games or so and finally it looks like we might be actually on our way to a victory although it's only 30 minutes into this game let's not talk too soon as Paniotov on the ball right now plays it over the top to Pepe if Pepe can make it three he can't of course he can't he doesn't like one-on-one -on -one situations on episodes. He doesn't really score that many, to be fair, off episodes either. Um, but has got 15 goals this season. Is our top scorer. That's why I keep playing him. But if he could just finish half the chances that he misses, he'd be absolutely phenomenal. As we lose possession stupidly at the back there with a really bad deflection from a clearance. And Chilwell with a chance to deliver a ball into the middle to the far post. Whoa, Chelsea really challenging, but not in the back of the net. If we can see this game out to half-time and winning it 2-0, this would be a great result for us. We head up to sixth in the table right now as well, I've just noticed. Obviously, other results will be going in our favour just a little bit. As uh, before half-time, can we grab a third? Perea does grab a third. 13th of the season for him. He's catching up to Pepe just a little bit. And potentially towards the end of this season, if Perea starts to overtake Pepe for goals... I might start to play him as the advance forward a little bit more and then rotate around with the false nines instead of Nice and Randy Ranheimer. But at the same time, this is Pereira scoring 13 goals and getting eight assists as a false nine. So, you know, I don't want to break things that are working for us right now. As we head into the second half, though, I'm feeling pretty confident as, I mean, what's going on here? West Ham are drawing and Liverpool are not playing by looks of things or are they may they played early i can't see the one with latest scores thing they must have lost their game earlier on today or something no they're three nil down to liverpool uh, four nil down to leicester there i can see sorry i've just spotted them so they're four nil down they're not winning this is really handy for us particularly as they have a game in hand on us it's just going to close that gap a little bit even if they go on to win their games in hand which is quite nice in the meantime 
With uh, 20 minutes or so to go in this game, we should look to make changes in a second, I think. Daniel Patrick plays the ball the wrong way, really. Should have gone the other way to where we had three players breaking. But still, Pepe can bring the ball. Play it back into Lavia, into Paniotto, into Daniel Patrick, who scores a superb goal to make it 4-0. Where has this performance come from? Because we did not look like playing like this at all in our past three games. Played very well against Everton, despite the 1-1 draw. Obviously, like a 3.4 XG, whatever it was, you know, should have scored more goals. Today, we are finally delivering on this, and Daniel Patrick, take a bow. Superb goal. Let's make some changes then to have a bit of a rest in this team. What I might do is move Pereira to be the advance forward on attack. And Nice comes on now to become a false nine. Now, he's actually got a right foot. He's got a pretty weak left foot, but deal with it, lad. Um, we'll also bring some Tesic off. Not the greatest of games for him. But there's probably more tied faces in Vasco Sousa. So we'll bring Kamara on for Vasco Sousa. I tell you what as well, let, let, let's get some Tesic off for Hector Garcia. Let's do it. Let's make the change. Bit of a rocky season for some Tesic. Been injured for quite a lot of it, to be fair. And hasn't been able to get a decent run of games going. Uh, obviously, still got a lot of faith in him as a first-choice left-back for the future. But uh, he needs to have a solid, consistent season next year without injuries to really cement that place. Otherwise, we could be looking to change him around a little bit, potentially. In the meantime, the ball over the top, not quite reaching the intended target as it was uh, actually intercepted quite nicely the second ball over the top again not quite reaching the intended target but can we get a third ball over the top no because Chelsea bring the ball down and look to come forward I'd love to keep a clean sheet here today against the Chelsea side chasing down Champions League footballers Amy puts the ball into the middle cleared by Kamara only as far as Chilwell I feel like this is the goal highlight and I feel like it's going to be for Chelsea and there we go you just know sometimes, don't you? You just know. Well, the positive of that is that no clean sheet bonuses are about to be paid out. So that, that's fine by me. I don't have to worry about clean sheet bonuses being paid to our players. Uh, hopefully, though, it's not going to be a comeback. I'm not quite sure what I've just seen there. Um, luckily, we're 4-2 up still. 15 minutes to go in this game. Oh, gosh, no. Not... not a I mean, Mantle made a bit of an effort of that one to be didn't he? A bit of a meal of that. Uh, Mantle then to bring this one out from the back. Oh, gosh. Oh, my goodness. What? Uh, suddenly, we are not defending very well. That was a warning shot. I don't think I've done anything to, to jinx this. I might have done, you know, I might have said something without realising I've said it. And here come Chelsea again. Uh, I might have to change things up in a second as, I mean, literally, uh, Mantle's got there first, which is quite nice. Uh, Chelsea win it at the back and finally we have actually regained a bit of uh, composure at the back. We need to sort this out in a second. Again, Garcia's header to Daniel Patrick. If we can score a fifth, I'd be happy as Nice, the wonder kid, into Paniotov, the other wonder kid, into Lavia, into Kamara, into Paniotov. Paniotov shoots from distance. Puts it over the bar. I think what we'll do is change our Mazalas to uh, Carrileros on support instead. Just to have a bit more of a defensive shape and swap those two over like that. Hopefully that'll just keep things calm for us. But uh, there's more highlights coming. Hopefully our direction as Paniotov on the ball into Kamara. Kamara into the area. Can't get the shot away. Paniotov can't get the shot away. Lavia can't. Daniel Patrick can. 5-2. Daniel Patrick second of the game. We have ripped Chelsea apart here today. Now, this gives me confidence. This gives me an awful lot of confidence for the cup final coming up next. Aston Villa in 15th right now. They were in the relegation zone, I think, actually. So they've had a bit of decent form by looks of things if they've got themselves out that relegation zone into 15th. But we just beat Chelsea 5-2. So I think we're doing better than they are. Although, let's not risk anything. They're a great team. I don't want to jinx it. No jinxing needed here, please. Although maybe I used all my powers the other day. I did a reverse jinx on Lincoln City. We were playing um, Sheffield Wednesday and I was commentating on the game. And uh, I tweeted before the game saying, oh, lads, you know, we're going to lose 4 or 5 nil here. They're going to absolutely paste us. And then we won 3-1 playing brilliantly. So I did a good reverse uh, jinx on Lincoln City this weekend. Um, so hopefully it carries on in this. Oh, look at that. Pedro Pere. I love to see it. Four-star credibility, five-star potential, uh, making remarkable improvements. You love to see it. That's what we want to see. And I think heading into next season, there's we, we've got a really solid team that I think is, you know, there's certain players in this team. I think all our strikers, actually, the four strikers that we've got now in uh, Nice, Ramheimer, Pereira and Pepe, like they're there for 
five years or so. Paniotov, if he doesn't get poached for like £100 million at some point, is going to be there for another five years or so. Like, he's a solid part of our team. Uh, I, oh, You hate to see it. Just as I big the players up, Pedro Pereira is now out with a fractured lower leg for the rest of the season. Three to four months. A heavy fall during training. You hate to see it. Right before the cup final, our talisman striker is out. Off to a specialist then. Let's, I mean, hopefully recovers nicely. Uh, this is going to be a big chance now for, well, Sione to maybe have an impact in the team, but mostly for the new signings of Nice and the re-signing of Randy Ramheimer to get themselves back in this team. We'll focus more on Randy tomorrow, I think. Today's the cup final, but I think the return of Randy is big, like the return of the prodigal son. Like he is the best youth player we've had come through. Obviously sold to Arsenal for a lot of money because he was greedy, didn't want to sign a new contract with us. It's ended up costing us, I guess, £22 million. We saw him for £10 million, didn't he? But we can, we can talk about that at a later date, can't we? Today, we can't do a team meeting because that will ruin things. I refuse to do a team meeting. This game is massive, though. This game is monumental. Like... This will get us European football. I think it might be Europa Conference League, if I'm honest with you, but we'll double check in a minute if it's Europa League. Winner gets Europa Conference League playoff place. Okay, so this would confirm us in Europa Conference League next season. And I'll be honest with you, I kind of want to be in it because I think that's a competition we really could be winning. Oh dear me. Four injuries and suspensions. I did not take this into account key players as well. Right, Neto's got to come off then. Bernal plays right back. This is not ideal at all. Uh, Daniel Patrick's got to come off. Aries Kamara on you come. Pedro Pereira has got to come off. We'll bring Frank Nice on to play as the false nine and then we'll bring Randy Ramheimer onto the bench. Spadina has got to come on. Actually, everyone's got to come, haven't they? That's how we're going to have to do it. Everyone who can't play is not on. Oh, jeez. This is not ideal. A good few changes made to the team here. It should be okay. It should be okay. It's the best we can do right now. It's the very best we can do. We just battered Chelsea. Let's have some confidence. So, kickoff is upon us here today at Wembley Stadium for the cup final of the League Cup. The first bit of major silverware we could be winning this season. And very early on in this game, Kamara racing forward. Can't get a ball forward, but Santetic does collect the loose ball. Plays it backwards into Luis Felipe and now into Saliba. Saliba brings it over the halfway line into Vasco Sousa, who chipped it over the top towards Pepe. Oh, defenders just about getting in the way there. Otherwise, Pepe was completely through and had a chance to score. In the meantime, Saliba wins at the back. Vasco Sousa somehow wins it in the air despite being tiny before we then lose possession. And here come Aston Villa early on in this game. Matty Cash racing down the right-hand side, looking to put a ball into the middle, which Darwin Nunes has put in the back of a net. 90 seconds into this cup final. The annoying thing is, right, uh, Aston Villa are nowhere near the top seven. If they win this, they basically take the European place that would go to seventh place in the league. It restricts a chance for us to get into European football if we don't win this. And it means we have to finish sixth in the Premier League, not just seventh. And that's a really big ask, a huge ask, particularly now we're out of the FA Cup as well. Like that's a, that's a big loss for us. And if Darwin scored again, I would have been fuming. Three minutes into this game, we are not showing anything right now. I'm going to shout demand more immediately, actually. Already, I'm shouting demand more. Less than 10 minutes into a game. That's It's not ideal, but we're going to have to do it. I also think maybe... We go to attacking pretty early on too. You know, I want to get some goals scored. There's a free kick for Villa though. And they've hit the post with it. What are we doing here today? Why are we not performing? Nice, find the ball, quick. They, I don't know why they're not playing well today. I mean, you've just seen us batter Chelsea 5-2. Who are a Champions League team fighting for the title. We battered them. And now we can't string a few passes together against Aston Villa. What is going on here? I mean, no one can tackle El Hadj either. Back to Matty Cash, into Ruiz. Can we just get the ball won back, please? Oh, Panayotov, no. I can't be having that. A 
for a player that I absolutely adore, I don't understand how he, he can do things like that. Why has he done that? I don't really feel the need to make any changes at this second in time, like with the shape or anything like that. Like there's nothing we can really do. We'll drop back down to positive. But I mean, this is a mountain. Absolute mountain. No chance. Absolutely no chance now. We've lost it. And it's all because I don't under... <sighs> Thrash the arms, what was that? Get out there and start playing football. What do we have to do? I think we leave it for a little while. We just see how we adapt. Although we're not really doing much, are we? We're actually having a few shots, to be fair. Up to four shots now. More than Villa have had in the past few minutes, but nothing's happening. Right. We need to make some inspired changes here. Like, we've got nothing to lose. Absolutely nothing to lose at this stage. We go for it. We put these people onto wing-backs on attack. We bring Lavia into the attacking midfield, who can actually play there quite comfortably. Maybe even as a shadow striker. Why not? It's an option, right? Randy Ramheimer can play on the left, can't he? Nice can play not that brilliantly there. Could Pepe, could Pepe be a better shadow striker? He might well be, you know. Levier on a 6 7, he's, we'll swap him with Kamara. We'll bring Pepe into the shadow striker, Randy Ramheimer on as the advance forward. And we'll go attacking as well. We've got to try everything here, haven't we? We have got to try everything. I'm going to shout demand more as well when this comes back up again. Shout demand more. And we've had six shots now all of a sudden. We're having a few more shots, but none of them on highlights. None of them are good enough. 20 minutes to go. Do we need to tweak free kick? Well, now it's all over, isn't it? Now it's all over. I can't believe this. What have we seen in today's episode? We batter one of the best teams in the world. We lose to this trash. I can't... And it's Panayotov's fault. I'm blaming him for all of this. Right, let's change a bit of... I don't know, more short passing, high tempo, run at the defence, to be fair. Let's play for some set pieces. We've got some players who can do that sort of thing. Um, distribute quickly. Like, really get on this right now. Yeah. I d pff, confirm all these changes. It's such a shame. It's such a shame. As El Hadj with a free kick. Short. Can we get a challenge in here, please? They're playing it backwards, weirdly. Randy Ramheimer can't quite get the challenge in there. El Hadj gets out wide to Matty Cash. Matty Cash then brings the ball out wide. If we can get a good clearance here. Yes, like that. Right, let's counter this. Let's counter this with some pace. Let's counter this with some attacking intent. We know we can score goals. We've scored plenty this season. Some Tesic into Lavia, back to Luis Felipe. Let's hold on to possession. And obviously we're not getting on the, on the fast break right now. Oh, Pepe could have slid that ball into Randy Ramheimer. Some Tesic... Can't quite get the cross in the middle. Ramheimer's there. Ramheimer's there. Technically, it's 12th of the season. Scored quite a lot for um, Norwich. I love that. Picks the ball up. But that could be a very important goal there for the return of the prodigal son. 15 minutes to go in this game. He smacks that into the roof of the net, by the way. Great goal from him. I'm also going to shout encourage immediately after that. Everyone's fired up by it. I can see the reaction on their faces. Thing is, are we going... There's a chance. Vasco Sousa into the middle. Luis Felipe over the bar. They're the sorts of chances that we need to be taking. I'm going to go very attacking now. I don't think there's much more I can really do in this situation. Vasco Sousa. Luis Felipe again. This time in the back of the net. Excellent work from him. We never say die. We never say die. I mean, I did say die earlier on. I think when they scored their second goal, I was like, that's it, we've lost. I had no faith. But apart from that, we never say die. As Luis Felipe puts that in the back of the net. Beautiful stuff from him. Right. We're in the ascendancy now. I was expecting extra time. I was expecting extra time. I was expecting extra time. <laughs> anyone but Ricardo Pepe. Anyone but Ricardo Pepe. We're, all I can do is sit back and watch. Good clearance, Saliba. 
oh, I thought he'd given a penalty. I thought the referee had given a penalty. I was stunned into silence then. A throw in for Villa. 92 minutes on the clock. Over the bar. Fine. Good. We're going to keep this attacking play going. We've got to keep it going. But the referee is going to blow his whistle for full time. Okay. Again, I'm going to thrash my arms. I'm going to say not good enough out there. And Vasco Sousa is demotivated by that, which I kind of understand, to be fair, because he's played pretty well. <sighs> okay. Tactically... Do I want to make any changes? Uh, we've made one change, to be fair. And a lot of players are looking quite tired, aren't they? I mean, Ostergaard could come on for Lavia, who's on a yellow card. Let, let's make that change there. Suter needs to come off. He's exhausted, but we can't really bring him off, can we? 15 minutes to go. I might come off very attacking, just go on to attacking. And I might, at this stage, actually make these guys wing backs on support. Like, we've got half an hour to play now, haven't we? So let's just be a little bit more sensible with all of this. Okay, so slight tweaks to the tactics. I even actually, oh, what I might do as well is just make Ostergaard a Carolera, just so we've got a little bit more defensive shape to ourselves there um, in case an Aston Villa attack comes. But we can't do much when it comes to free kicks. <sighs> We can't do much when it comes to free kicks. Like, it's not from open play. We've not done that from open... I mean, we've obviously given the free kick away in open play in a dangerous area. I mean, how no one's got to that ball before Chapel has done there, that's really frustrating. 20 minutes, uh, and, and automatically, like, we have to go back to this, don't we? We have to go back to just pushing for attack. At this stage, once again, nothing to lose. So let's bloody go for it. Highlight though, uh, I'm not sure if this is for the so the changes or not, but Bernard on the ball out wide can get a ball into the middle and it's cl ugh, cleared only as far as Ostergaard. Pepe shoots, blocks. Oh, don't give me hope like that. Again, I'm going to just shout, demand more quickly before half time and extra time. Bernal into Vasco, back to Bernal, across to Frank Nice, who heads it across goal, puts it in the back of the net. Now, the referee is talking about offsides here. Personally, I did not see a single bit of offside there at all. That should be counting. If this is disallowed, I'll be fuming. Wh why? Who's offside here? Now, we can't really see the defender marking Randy Ramheimer. Ramheimer is offside. But I'm looking at the feet of this Aston Villa player and they are between the legs of Ramheimer. He's in line. This is negligible. That's not offside in my books. Again, if we switch it to the 2D camera uh, for replays... Uh, then it does look a bit more clear cut that Nice is offside, doesn't it? That's uh, that's ruined my day. Okay, well, look, we've scored a goal like that. We we can do it again, can't we? We can do it again. I'm going to shout demand more right at the start of the second period of extra time. Come on, ten minutes to go. I mean, there's there's not really a whole lot more I can do. Can I? I'm trying to move these guys up to be wing backs. Not midfielders, wing backs. Come on, like that. That's what I want to see. Uh, wing back attack. Wing back attack. I mean, at this stage, nothing to lose. 3 2 down. They might score a goal themselves, but we have to try and just push everyone forward. And sadly, it's not going to be enough, is it? I mean, well done, Aston Villa. They, they they probably were the better team on the day, I think, particularly right at the start of that game. But we did not help ourselves with... Well, Panayotov did not help us at all, did he? Panayotov did not help us in the slightest. We also drop out of the top seven, thanks to wins for Liverpool and West Ham United. Great. Uh, we now have to try and fight for sixth place because seventh place is essentially given now in terms of European places to Aston Villa. So good for them. Paniotov then on the receiving end of a match ban for a straight red card. Bad tackle. Referee decision justified. 
I'm going to find him two weeks wages. Let's see how he, he fares with that. I mean, that might be a bit harsh, to be fair. And it's probably an emotional reaction more than anything else. Does he accept his fine? He accepts his fine. He understands. And you know what? That's that's made me feel not as... Well, I still feel quite bad about what's happened. But it makes you feel less cross with him. He's realised his mistake. He realised what he's done. He accepts losing £64,000 because... Uh, it's a lot of money to lose, mate. Um, his aggression's not even that high as well, to be fair. Oh, well. It's a moment of madness, isn't it? Does he not like big games? It says nothing about big games on his cons. So it was just a moment of madness for him. It's cost us massively. I want to be cross with him, but I can't because he's literally like the best wonder kid we've got in the team right now. It's really annoying. And I'll be honest, he scored 10 goals in the league, five uh, assists in the league as well. Like He's probably won us a lot of points this season as well. I, I'm trying to... I'm trying to be cross with him, but I can't. That's really annoying. But it means we have a big fight. A big fight for top six football. Because it's now updated, look. It's now updated. <sighs> Seventh place, no longer green for European football. Imagine. Imagine the pain. Last season, we missed out on European football on goal difference. What if this season we come seventh and miss out on it because we bottled a cup final? Didn't even bottle it really, did we? Because we were a man down, a big disadvantage. Oh, I don't know. And I thought as well, when Randy Ramheimer scored his goal, I thought, right, the return of the prodigal son, he's come to rescue us. And he, he gave us hope, but not enough. Next time out then, we've got a very tough April. I think we've not played Man City on camera this season, and they are top of the league right now. So I think next episode, we come back for Cardiff and Man City. We play these games in between episodes and hopefully we have more wins like the 5-2 against Chelsea but I'm I'm not sure. I'm nervous. A big end to the season coming up. A really big end to the season coming up and uh, hopefully we're going to be on the right end of it all but you can never tell. You can never tell. And with some big games coming up too, a bit of inconsistent form. Remember how last season finished? We didn't win a single one of our seven last games of the season and that ruined our chances. Is it going to happen again? Is history going to repeat itself? I don't know. I'm terrified. Either way, thank you very much for watching today's episode. Hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, drop a like on the video for me, despite the loss. Um, subscribe to me around here and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, have a good one. Goodbye.